Uh, what is what's up? Got podcast in the cut. This isn't a podcast. This is just me doing a little video. Um, I'm trying not to say real quick just because he wants to be move good to my family and hopefully have a better time than I had watching this game. Uh, I'm an Auburn fan. I've been an Auburn fan since uh, existence. Um, I've watched 2012. I watched 2015. Uh, I even watched 2018. You know, I thought it was a pretty bad season too. Um. Then I watched 2008, but uh, watch most of the shitty season of the Millennium, and this will probably be well. Let's introduce the format here. The format is the ten predictions I am attempting to make about the season based on this game, this atrocity, this abuse, this uh, scandal, this harassment, this truly disastrous. What what what, what did Millennia say in a uh, the fucking game. Uh, you know which millennium I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I have never lost. <laughs> Something like that. I have never faced defeat. You will witness true horror. That's pretty much what that game was. I witnessed true horror. Just an atrocity, really. One of the worst performances of all time. Um, when, when you really factor in the states that was there. I mean, you had an entire stable of recruits. This is your orange out game. You blue balled uh, the entire fan base after teasing for an entire week for some ungodly reason. I'm not sure why they did this. It's, it made no. F- I'm in my mom's house trying not to curse. Uh, it made no sense at that to me to do that. Like, if you know you're not going to do the orange jersey, just nip it in the bud. Just like post the blue jerseys in their entirety. Even when they post the navy blue jerseys with the, I guess, that orange stripe being a sense a little bit, they didn't post the full jerseys. Just admit that you're not doing the orange jerseys. There's nothing to gain from blue balling fans. I guess maybe trapping them into buying a ticket they might not otherwise have bought unless they thought orange tickets, orange jerseys were coming. But that was asinine. Uh, and going to the prediction one, I, I believe the fan attendance will drop dramatically for the next game. I believe we play Missouri. Uh, I think it'll be... I don't want to say tens of thousands less, but I want to say tens of thousands less. Uh, if this was a full house, I think it was, at least initially speaking. Obviously, it wasn't by the end of the game. I would probably guess like 65000 for the next game. That's just a guess. Uh, the tickets would probably be dirt cheap because of how god-awful Auburn was and how god-awful Missouri uh, is. So, you know, a lot of a lot of families have to take their kids for some reason. I think this is torment, by the way. To take your kids to a shitty game, I think it's torment. I don't know why you would do that. There is no good memory one can have from going to a fucking terrible Auburn game. Because Auburn plays such a boring awful brand of football that it's like what can be gained from going to like what are you going to show them like oh this is how offensive line shouldn't block this is how quarterback shouldn't throw like what are you going and show them anyway um i think the tennis will drop dramatically i'll speed rush through this i think harson is far before the end of the season uh, i think offensive line reshuffles at least two or three more times as a unit uh, i think harson fires eight assistant coach before he himself gets fired uh, heart, uh, friend makes the most sense to me, even though I thought friend should be unemployed uh, at any point last year. He is one of the worst coaches in the entirety of football, and I, I genuinely mean that. He is an atrocity to coaching. Having him on your team is a death note, and that's how your name written into a death note. It is actually a negative to have him on your team. Even if he was just a graduate assistant, he's a negative to your team. He is aids to any team so probably will frank gets fired um number five i think defense gets even worse uh they looked I, i've seen the auburn teams quit that that team quit the defense quit it did not want to get hit by uh singleton again which i saw singleton play against ohio and i was like that motherfucker is it uh when i compared him to Kayvon lee uh he's in a different league of football than Kayvon lee and uh, I was scared at the prospect they found a guy finally as a running back that was actually dynamic, and they did. Um, he looked like it. Uh, that's I think it's five. Uh, sister receivers. One of the receivers will be good. <laughs> I don't know what that really means at the end of the day. Landon King is an NFL talent. Uh, I think Javarius Johnson is very solid, uh, even good at moments. I think Shooter Jackson is okay, um, like college level okay. Uh, but I, I think either Landon King or maybe J.J. 
or maybe even a, a Caden Brown or how do you say his name, Camden Brown. I think one of the receivers will be actually good. It won't be good for Auburn, but they'll be actually good. Uh, I think Calzada will play. Uh, I don't think there's any value in having Calzada play. His offensive line is horrible. Uh, top to bottom, just god-awful. Uh, horrid. Trash. Disgusting. They make you vomit in your butthole watching them play. They are an affront to football itself. The sport, the sport is supposed to be played, and it's none of their faults. They should not have been the SEC level. Most of them should not be on the SEC level. They have a, I think a guy that's like 250 pounds playing center. He shouldn't be playing off the SEC level. It's just that simple. Like, they, these guys just shouldn't be playing this level. They did not recruit themselves at Auburn. Auburn recruited them. I don't blame any of them for being terrible, but they are collectively horrid. Um, when you're when you're like in a, st- a shake of a state of awe because you can't throw out Nicholas Brahms, who. Um, that's a sign of something. I think a seven. Uh, running backs. I think running backs will be very fine as far as prospects go. I don't think Jarquez has some of the potential I see other people say he has, but I think he really is a solid running back. Is Peyton Barber adjacent to me? Uh, behind and if he was behind a better offensive line, that could probably be his kind of career projection. Uh, Tank Bigsby. Um, is everything people say Tank Bigsby is for Tank Bigsby to have? I think. Over 75, 80 yards in this game uh, combined is impressive because they literally bless every play. For him to have, if he had 70, that's impressive. If he had 60, it might have been impressive. They literally, like, after the first quarter, started blitzing every play. Any running back who found success in that format, it did an amazing job of helping out the team. Uh, Tank would, I think Tank would honestly God be like a, a um, the first running back off the board if he played at Georgia. If he transferred Georgia, he was supposed to have done. I think he'd be one of the best players in all of football. Unfortunately, he decided to be loyal to Auburn. Um, number nine? I feel like we're on number nine at this point. Um, the athletic director will be a good old boy. I'm not going to go into this too much, but I think Rich McGlynn, who I believe is Rich, uh, good old boy adjacent uh, in the board of trustees, uh, was promoted to associate athletic director. He's probably making quite a bit of the calls that will be made around the bye week or whenever they choose to start moving on from Harson officially. Uh, I imagine that some of the like finalists that we look forward to will be guys that he has contacted. So I would very much expect, this is going to be a tenth prediction, I very much so expect the new head coach, whoever it may be, to be very Auburn-related uh, in one way or another. Now, I'm not saying that McGlynn... Or even the board of trustees by uh, proxy will be making the decision entirely, but you can expect that the athletic director will be a good old boy or at least comparable to it. Um, so in essence, it will be somebody that the board of trustees actually sign off on, unlike the previous head coach. Um, so probably be another awful head coach, more than likely. Somebody like, fuck it, I don't even know. Like, I mean, Jeff Grimes is the one most people want. I feel like if that was going to happen, it would happen by now. Rich McGee, another one that if it would happen in some kind of way, would have happened by now as far as coming back to Auburn. I can't even imagine who it would be, but I retread is the name of the game of Auburn, so maybe we'll find somebody that's not too retready, but, you know. As long as it's not like, fucking, I don't, I don't know. If it's not, who's the one that at, at, at SMU, SMU, um, Rhett Lashley? It sounds like Rhett Lashley. Like, if it's a Rhett Lashley, a Chip Lindsay. Uh, just another recent grad, Kevin Steele. If it's any of those guys, I mean, it, it's it, we're sunk for the next decade. If that's the case, like we might already be sunk for the next decade. That was one's going to take like years to fix, <laughs> like years to fix, <laughs> years. Uh, if the head coach is is terrible too, it, we're cooked for you no know, foreseeable future. That's it. That's about ten. I say I don't really know if it's ten on the dot, but. I feel bad for the fans. They came out. They were very loud. They were blue balled. Uh, they were met with a god awful performance by the head coaches, the coaching staffs, uh, the board of trustees, uh, whoever manages the NIL at Auburn, uh, that has led to the offensive line being as bad as it is, as poor. But people don't really understand there's only so many good offensive linemen in the entirety of the world, especially in America, where you're primarily getting your offensive line from. And if you don't have money to bid, you're not going to get many of them. And Auburn has not bid at a competitive rate for offensive linemen yet in the NIL era. And 
until they do, they're going to continue to suck at football. So yeah, uh, Auburn sucks. Uh, probably if I had to ballpark, probably a four and eighteen. If I had to just take a stab at it, uh, they look very uncompetitive. They look very bad. They look they're very prone to quit in their regards. They have a very big margin of uh, uh, deficit point wise, which they're going to have a deficit against. Uh, I would think Georgia and Alabama automatically. Maybe it's Ole Miss. Depend on which Ole Miss offense comes out that day. Uh, and then probably it's Arkansas, too, who plays a very smash mouth offense that smashed the shit out of Auburn today. So I would think at the ballpark, at least three more blowout losses. Uh, and I probably think Carson gets fired by, like, week seven, probably. So, yeah. Uh, L-tastic. Really bad. Really, really bad.